Okay, hi folks. So last time I told you something about the structure of ROS repositories and about ROS packages. Um, so just let me shortly state some facts about ROS packages. So in general, they are uh, they consist of different subfolders in which, for example, the notes, uh, scripts, and the lunch files are and so on are stored. So as I mentioned, uh, one important folder, as le at least if you're programming in C++, is a source folder. Then we have always, in general, lunch folders in our launch packages. And if we want to make custom messages, we also have a message folder. Then we need a CMake list um, and a packages XML to complete our ROS packages or our ROS package. And if you are a bit uh, more deep into ROS, then you might add also some um, script folder where you, if you mix Python and ROS code, um, where you have Python scripts. Um, however, I recommend to either program everything in C++ or program everything in Python. However, um, that's up to you. And you might have also some header folder uh, later on if you are um, source files here getting really large. Okay. Okay, these are um, kind of a structure of ROS packages. And I told you last time that we also include the simulation environment as a package in our ROS repo. Um, however, no rule without an exception. So since the simulation environment is basically um, based on Gazebo, the package, the package structure looks um, quite different. So um, let's define how a Gazebo package works, which is basically also kind of a Rust package, or included at least in our Rust repository. So in our Gazebo package, we also have a lunch folder for starting later on our simulation. Then we definitely have a world folder, a worlds folder where we store our worlds. And we have a models folder where we store our models. And then we also again need a CMake list and a packages XML. Okay. And if you're a bit more advanced, you can e also create your own plugins, which you would store in the source folder. Um, so this is for plugins or ROS nodes. And you might have also um, some config folder for configuration data and so on. Okay. Okay, let's start and I will show you now how to program the whole gazebo package in um, yeah how to set it up and how to fill in all the required files which are required here in these different folders we won't use this and we won't use this um, first we concentrate on the world folder to generate a world and then I will show you how to generate a launch data and Afterwards, we fill up our world with life by including some models. Okay, so um, here we are. We are now back in Ubuntu. And this is our simulation environment package, which is suited in the diff drive robot repository, which we created last time. So here's our diff drive robot repository with the simulation environment package and our commander package. Uh, last time I named it control package. I renamed it called Commander is a bit more general the name, but however the name is in general, um, so it doesn't matter in general the name. And the whole repository is suited in the diff drive workspace and there in the source folder, uh, where we can then build our whole repository, so all our whole packages. Right now we will co concentrate on the simulation environment package, and I added all important folders already. So we need a lunch folder, we need a models folder, and we need a worlds folder. We need also CMake list text and a package XML. What these uh, CMake lists and package XML include? 
I will show you um, oh, later. I will show you later. So first we go on the world file. So the world file is this file. I call it diff drive world, and it's also an XML file, but with dot world as an ending. Uh, let me open that in a real editor. So um, open with another application. I will open it with a text editor. And that's it. So I will go now a bit through the code. Um, if you want to program it in your own PC, um, simply stop the video and then you can see everything and program it. Okay, so first we introduce that this is an XML file and we tell them which version we are using. Then we open up the SDF and we also have to define a version. Um, then we start the world. So we start a world with a name differential drive world. And after we started the world, we can now include our models. And the first thing which we include is a ground plane. And the ground plane here is simply um, provided by Gazebo already. And we can access this with this line of code. So we add, um, so we access the model folder and then take the ground plane. And to paint the ground plane, to give it a specific material, we can add this line of code, which is also um, already provided in Gazebo. Okay, this kind of material. You will see that's kind of a gray uh, material for the ground plane. And then we have to add also a global light source. This is this line of code. Uh, this is also provided already by Gazebo. That's simply sun. The sun will uh, lead to some shadows and some light uh, with which we then can see our robot perfectly. And then finally we have to set up the solver for our simulations and the physics. Um, right now we simply use the ODE solver for uh, with 70 iterations and a real-time update rate of 1500. Okay. And uh, here are some other specifications. You can simply use them as I gave it to you. However, you can have a much more deeper in look into ODE servers um, and sub solver engines because they are kind of. So, they, um, to understand them fully, we would need a complete lecture. Um, it's real a lot about how to solve differential equations numerically because all physics are based on differential equations and to solve them we're using some uh, mathematical uh, algorithms um, for example Euler-Newton method and so on. However, uh, if you want to go deeper into how this kind of solver works then I highly recommend to attend some math class um, where they explain how to solve numerical differential equations. Okay, after we included all our models and the physics, then we simply close the world file and the SDF file, and that's it. So then we can save it and close everything. Okay, that come close. So that's our diff drive world. So now we have to launch this diff drive world, and therefore we use a launch file. Um, I call this diff drive launch. It's also an XML file. Oh, I open it with a text editor again. So here I define again an XML version and here I define also an encoding. Um, in my case it's UTF-8. Then I open the launch file and close it here again. And I first start by defining some arguments. So these are base parameters so that I have to only change them here or give them directly when I want to launch it in my um, my terminal, then I can change these parameters. Otherwise, I simply use the default parameters which are stated here. So basically, um, here are the world parameters. Um, here are use sim time, so use simulation time, open the GUI, the graphic user interface, and so on and so forth. Um, I highly recommend to have uh, for you to have a deeper look into which into uh, to what, what the arguments exactly do to the simulation. So then we simply have to load the world environment, therefore we include the file. So we find Gazebo ROS launch empty world launch. So this is basically a launch file from Gazebo ROS, so which is provided by Gazebo already. And 
this lunch file requires some parameters which we have to pass to them. And we pass these parameters by simply using these kind of loop codes. So we are stating an argument, then we tell them which name has the argument, and then we tell them which value we want to pass. And right now, for our world name, we want to pass sim uh, final, um, simply our differential drive world. So we give them a well defined simulation environment. So this means that the algorithm tries to find our ROS package simulation environment. And then in this ROS package, he, he finds the world folder and then the drift drive world data. And for the rest, we use simply stated arguments as here, uh, as you find above. Okay, that's it. If you want to write it up, simply stop the video and copy it. So now we have to simply fill up also the CMake list text. Uh, let's open this. Uh, I did that already, so it's we have to define the minimum CMake version required. We have to define the project name. This should be um, the package name, simulation environment here. Then we find we use five packages which we require. We require Catkin, uh, we require Ros C++, Ros Python. In general, we don't require really Ros Python. However, I like to add always these both. And of course, we require Gazebo Ros as a package. Uh, then we have to define some dependencies. Right now, we have to define which dependencies are on Gazebo. So Gazebo is required. And then we have to define also the Catkin packages. We then link simply to the directory, include our catkin and gazebo uh, directories, also the source directory, and then send, set some gazebo flags, uh, flags which we require um, later on, maybe, if we want to add our own plugins. That's it, basically. Okay, if you want to copy that, please stop the video, um, then you simply can copy it to your own file. So let's go to the package XML, have a look into that. Um, the package XML is simply stated at this. Again, we define XML version. We should define all XML version as the same. I'll use everywhere the XML version 1.0. Uh, then we open our package, term also the same name, simulation environment. Um, this is our version name. However, right now it's 000. So here right now would be the 100 version, so the, our first version. Then we add a simply a short description, a maintainer, uh, we define a license, and then we define which build tools we want to use. Right now we want to use Catkin and Gazebo Ross. And then we want to define which build dependencies we have. Right now we have the dependencies that we require the Gazebo Ross packages, the Ross CPP and Ross Python packages for building everything. Also, we need it at runtime, so that that's the reason why we add here the run dependencies. And we also add some um, plugin passes, so passes for our Gazebo ROS. Uh, right now we're adding here the uh, lib uh, library, the Gazebo media pass, and the model pass. Um, that's the reason why we can later um, access, for example, our models directly. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's save it. If you want to copy it, just again, simply stop the video and copy to your own file. So that's it. So that's our base structure. We have created the word file. We have created the lunch file. We define our CMake list, our package XML. And now we can simply start our simulation environment. Um, therefore, we open up a terminal. We access our diff drive workspace. You can simply add CD for change directory, then diff drive. If you don't want to write out the full name, you can simply use tabulator. Um, then uh, Ubuntu will fill up possible names. So then enter. So now we are in the diff drive workspace. Now we have to build everything. Therefore, we use catkin make. This builds the packages and this ensures that ROS will find all packages. Um, for example, when we are using ROS launch, we need ROS to find these packages. So we hit in enter and then everything will be built and should exceed um, normally. Okay, it's done. And now we can source the environment. So we source our environment by setting source devil setup dot bash. So now the environment is sourced and now we can 
was lunch our environment. So was lunch means we want to launch a launch script. And we first have to define the package where the launch script is um, suited in. So in our case, it's simulation environment. Again, if we are if we search the environment, um, we don't need to enter the full name. We can simply use a tabulator, and Ross will find us the um, suitable package. And now we can do the same for our lunch script. And um, right now we call it our lunch script lift drive lunch, and again Ross will find it. And now we can simply hit enter, and Ross will start our gazebo environment, including Ross with gazebo Ross. So now it's opened up the GUI. And since it's it's a virtual machine, um, it might be that it's a bit slowly. However, it will work too for the first time. So again, you see we have here the ground plane. Uh, we have now our graphical user interface. Um, however, if your machine is too slow, as is mine right now, uh, you can open you can use the simulation environment without this graphical user interface later on and when we do make some real, um, real simulations. Now you could scroll on through this um, and have a look what you can do here.